Me too. Have you been sexually assaulted or violated? Me too. Why do victims wait so long to come out? Why do victims sometimes wait years to come out? I want to start with this by saying I'm one of the lucky ones. I haven't been raped. <laughs> I don't know the visceral pain of actually being raped. In light of years that have featured Bill Cosby and Harvey Weinstein being accused of attacking a lot of women, And a very recent one with Kevin Spacey and a young man. I hear people say, why now? Why are victims speaking out now? Why didn't they speak up then? I even had a family member ask, hypothetically, he didn't really want an answer. But why do victims wait? Asking that somehow discredits that we were victimized and it makes us more afraid to bother to speak out ever. <laughs> I'm not a pretty crier, so... Uh... But I'm not making this video to look pretty. Off the top of my head, I can name you a dozen times that I have been sexually assaulted. Some of them were so mundane that some people would say they're not assault at all. There was the time in eighth grade that I was walking to class. And Jason, as I walked by, he reached out and grabbed my breast. That wasn't the first time I had been grabbed, but that was the first time I had been so randomly. I went and told my teacher. She confronted him and he said it was an accident and that he bumped into me in the hallway. She told me to try not to let it bother me and that there was nothing she could do that he said it was an accident. There was the time in high school, ninth grade, where I shared a table with Eric, a kid I had grown up with since elementary school. And for some reason, he decided it'd be very funny to take a ruler and slowly and carefully under the table, decide to poke me in the crotch with it. I was mortified and I told him I would castrate him if he ever said another fucking word to me or touched me again. I could tell he actually felt bad. He thought it was just a joke and he was in a place between being caught off guard by how upset it made me and trying to defend himself. I told that teacher he told me there was nothing he could really do about it and that I just needed to sit at a different table the next day. There was this time that I went to the beach with family friends. I was in, it was the summer after sixth grade. 
And there were a number of us kids on the trip and a number of adults. And there was an outdoor shower. Wooden walls all the way around, a door, a latch on the inside that closes. And I was taking a shower And I realized that the man, one of the men who I had gone on the trip with, was watching me shower through a hole. He was in his 40s. I was 12. He was watching me. I don't know how long he had been watching. I backed against the wall and told him he needed to leave. It took him a couple minutes before he did. It took me a lot longer than that to feel like I was safe. Later, when I was 14, that same family friend told me that he wishes he could lick my toes. But you know, that guy, He's a family man. He's got children. He has grandchildren. He's a good neighbor and a good community citizen. There was that time when I was 17 and I had a boyfriend and there was a big school event and after the school event was over, A number of us spent the night together, girls and guys, mixed bag. We all slept in one room together. It was supposed to be a really fun night, and because it was an allowed sleepover, it was supposed to be safe. My boyfriend and I had kissed, you know. We were 17. We had not been unclothed together. We had not slept together. I woke up in the morning. There were five or six of us sleeping in that room. And my boyfriend was up against me. And he had his penis pulled out. And he was hard. And he was rubbing himself against my arm and my hip. I was laying on my stomach and he had his hand on my butt. <laughs> and I felt sick to my stomach. We hadn't done anything like that. And I started praying in my head that he would stop. I didn't want it to go any further and I didn't want to have to embarrass him. I didn't want to have to admit how awkward it was to wake up to that. So I just prayed he would stop. Instead, while well, he thought I was still asleep, he stuck his hand down my underwear and tried to finger me. I realized he wasn't going to stop. So without even opening my eyes, just as sternly as I could, called his name and said, stop. And he did. And then there was the time that made me realize that I was lucky. I was lucky I wasn't raped. That maybe I was even lucky I wasn't murdered. I was 20, 
I had been in a serious relationship for about two years. My girlfriend and I lived in a house together. She had lived there before me. I moved in with her. And one night we had about 10 of us over there and we all had a good time just hanging out together for the night. When I woke up in the morning, everybody had left for either school or work, except for me. And as I went downstairs, I realized that I was actually not home alone. One of the guys One of the guys was still there. He's a guy we've known for a long time, especially my girlfriend. Uh, he actually was the boyfriend of like two or three years of this really fabulous girl that we knew, know. And he and a couple of his buddies from out of town were still at the house. Well, it wasn't really my house, even though I lived there, it wasn't really my house to say, I don't want you here. <laughs> hey, buddy. Anyhow, when I woke up and realized they were still there, my gut told me to get out. My gut told me I'm in a house with three guys who are older than I am by a few years only one of whom I know, and none of them I know that well. My gut said, get out. My brain said, don't be that girl. Don't, don't be that girl that overreacts and thinks that all guys are rapists and feels like she can't be safe at her own house. So I stayed. And they were outside playing football while I watched 90210 reruns inside on the couch. <laughs> Suddenly I realized it was silent outside. I've never experienced before or since such an intense silence while a television is on. Again, my stomach told me it was not right. Within just a moment, they came into the living room and kind of sat down facing me and just were chatty, asking me about my relationship, asking me about school and television. And within seconds, they were standing over me. And they told me they had come because they knew what I had done. And I told them I didn't know what, I, what they were talking about. And they said they knew what I had done and I just needed to confess. At this point, I'm actually annoyed. I wasn't even scared, I was pissed. I don't know what you're talking about, I didn't do anything. They said, we know better. And I said, well, I, I don't care. I don't care if you know better. You're allowed to think whatever you want. Unless you're gonna tell me what I did, let's stop playing this game. It felt like it was a matter of seconds. It felt like in a matter of seconds, they had me flipped over on the couch. They pinned me down on my stomach. They had bandanas or something and they tied my arms together behind my back. They tied my feet together. They put a blindfold around my face. And they put a gag in my mouth. And I was so scared. And at that point, I started just freaking out. And I was jerking around and begging them not to gag me. 
Anything, just don't gag me. <laughs> I didn't know what they were gonna do. One of the guys said, go ahead and go and gag her. <laughs> and then the three of them picked me up and carried me to a different room. And they put me in a chair. And they kept telling me that I needed to confess to what I had done. All I can think is, please Lord, get me out of this. I tried really hard not to cry. I was trying to be a badass like I had seen in movies. A very, screw you. Screw you, I'm confident. That's the attitude I wanted to give them. Because I was afraid. That if I showed them my fear, that they would do worse things to me. And they would take too much gratification in it. Still tied up, they spun that computer chair around and around and around and around and around and around. They wanted me disoriented. When they got done spinning me, they asked me again to confess to what I had done. Except I couldn't. And they knew I couldn't. Because they were making everything up. <laughs> they pulled my shirt up. They took the tip of something pointy and ran it across my neck up and down my arms, across my rib cage and my stomach. <sighs> this is so hard. They took some sort of liquid, some sort of thick liquid and they rubbed it across my face and my neck. They rubbed it down my collarbones and up my rib cage to my bra line. I told them they needed to stop pulling my shirt up. They spun me around some more. This went on somewhere between a half hour to an hour. I was late to go see Mark. <laughs> when the game got old to them, they decided to take off the blindfold and dump me out of the chair into the floor and start tickling me. And they were tickling me and all I could think is, please untie me and let me go. Let me get out of here. And, and then the one that I knew, he started spanking me. And I was just so done. And I snapped. Your girlfriend would not appreciate this very much. And he stopped. And he got off me. And he looked me dead in the face and said, What, are you going to tattle on me? He untied me then.
I tried to seem cool. I went to my room. I closed my door and I locked it. I went to the bathroom. I closed the door and I locked it. I debated on if I should call the police. But I thought, what are they gonna do? I looked at myself and realized what they said was a knife had been nothing more than a pen. I had ink lines across my neck and my body. The liquid was probably lotion. I was still scared. I went in the shower and I turned it on and just like you see in television and movies I got down on the floor of the shower and curled up holding my knees and cried and I cried And I got up and I scrubbed my body. I scrubbed off all the ink. I scrubbed until it hurt. I washed my hair and my face and my body over and over again. And I got done and I was afraid to leave my bathroom. Because what if they managed to get into my bedroom and were waiting for me? I finally opened my door, went to my room, and I got dressed, and I knew I had to go see Mark. He was waiting for me. And I looked out my window to see if I could see them. I sat in my room for 15 minutes or better, listening for any signs of them. I was afraid they weren't done. When I was convinced they may not be there, I got out of that house as fast as I could. I got in my car and I drove off. I went to Mark's and I vowed to myself I would never tell anyone what happened. Was it my fault for being there? Could I have stopped them? I tried really hard to pull it together. But as soon as Mark saw me, he knew things weren't okay. I told him everything was fine. And he didn't believe me. And he wouldn't let up. And I could tell he was scared for me. So I reluctantly told him what had happened. A shorter version that you just got. I had never seen him so mad. Not at me. He hugged me and he held me. He told me I was okay. He wanted to go right then, I'm sure, and kill him. Except we knew they probably weren't there. And all I could think is, I was lucky that I wasn't right. Because there are girls who are all the time. For years after that, if Mark and I were wrestling, playing around, and he grabbed me by the wrist, I would start yelling and jerking around, telling me he had to let go of me. For years after that, anytime somebody tried to come up behind me and put their hands over my eyes, I started jerking and screaming that they couldn't, that I couldn't breathe. <laughs> Even if my mouth and nose were completely uncovered, I felt like I couldn't breathe. 
I told my girlfriends what happened and they felt horrible for me. They were angry that it happened. But when it was their birthday, he was invited because it was too weird and awkward not to because we would have to explain to his girlfriend what happened. So I didn't go because Merck and I couldn't be where he might be. I was told that I just needed to forgive him and let it go because while it sucked, there was nothing that could be done about it. I've had girlfriends that were raped who were told that it was their boyfriend or that they had been drinking, that they had asked for it. They've been told that it's going to be he said, she said, and that the burden's on her to prove it. Why don't victims come out? When it happens. You know, I asked Mark one time if he had ever been assaulted or abused. I thought if nobody ever asked a guy, why would a guy ever come out? He said no. Thank God. But a lot of people also say no who have been. A lot of people never get asked. And a lot of people are afraid to come forward. For hours before sitting down here right now, I felt sick on my stomach at the thought of making this video. Because what if that guy finds out that I told the story of what he and his friends did to me? What will my girlfriends think? Is me coming out a betrayal to them? Because this involves a lot of people and only those guys did that to me, but this rocks boats. If family members see this, they're going to ask Mark awkward questions. This puts Mark in a weird situation. Why don't victims speak up? Why does it take years for victims to have the strength to speak up? You tell me. The thing is, I'm not special. Most of the things that have happened to me are such a normal part of life as a female and possibly as a male too. They were expected not to speak up. If someone grabs our body, you need to let it go. I'm not special. This happens to lots of us. Has it happened to you? Me too. Why does it take so long for victims to speak up?